Hello, Popper fans. This is Methonical, and you're joining me for round six of the Popper Challenge from October the 29th. Our opening hand is a very reasonable hand. We've got all of our mana sources. We've got the Palace Sentinels of its control matchup, Guardian for many matchups, some removal. The only downside is there are two Guardians, but that is fine. So we're just going to start on our crossroads, gain some life, and we're going to just get our black source, but we're also going to display our tapped land just to get that out of the way. We now have three mana available. Uh, this allows us to play a nice whisper, and since we've drawn a Thraven Inspector, we get that out as well. If our opponent leaves mana up, we're not going to play the Palace Sentinel into possible counter magic. Uh, that's basically the one card we need to resolve since we're playing blue and black. So we're just going to play anything else that we feel like, uh, just to try and bait out counter spells, and if they ever tap out, we're just going to go for the Palace Sentinels. So, since they're not doing anything, we're just going to play the Root Guardian. Since they're not getting uh, countering that, it's very likely they have either some kind of sacrifice effect, or they don't have counter spells. Here, uh, we're just going to run out a Thraven Inspector for some sacrifice protection, and run out another Guardian, because why not? And here they do end up using one of their counter spells. They disfigure our Thraven Inspector and make us sacrifice our other Guardian. So, we were playing around as much as we could previously. They still have counter magic open, so we're not going to play our Palace Sentinels. That's a card we still need to resolve. Bouncing this completed step allows us to draw an additional card. Of course, it's just a land, so things aren't looking too hot, and I'm just hoping we can get this Palace Sentinel to resolve at some point. Since uh, they've got a Crypt Rat online, uh, things are looking a little hairy. Uh, Flicker would be a bit of a downside. And since we're not under pressure immediately, I'm not going to play the Palace Sentinels, and I'm just going to hope they tap out at some point. And since I knew they had a Chainer's Edict in the graveyard, and they had 7 mana, it's very likely they're going to tap out at some point, and there they did. Now we're able to get our Palace Sentinels online, and play our core Skyfisher to have 2 blockers. It is possible for them to remove both of our creatures, but I feel like this is our best chance to get the Monarch online. They kill one of our creatures. We're just going to block anyway, expecting an Echoing Decay. It comes along, so we do lose our creature, but we, importantly, hold on to the Monarchy. Here we're able to try and cast a Pestilence to remove their creature. They do have a counter spell, so once again we're back into iffy territory. And we're just going to kind of hope they don't have a counter spell with the two cards they have. We do have two creatures, both of which can block the, uh, the Cheering Rat profitably, and both can attack. So they need to have two ways of dealing with our creatures next turn, otherwise we're going to take the Monarchy back. Which is good for us. Our opponent is preordaining, that means they don't have anything immediately, and they didn't counter or remove any of our things last turn. Since they're just flashing back a... Uh, an Edict, we're going to be able to get in and steal the Monarchy back, and a Thraven Inspector is really nice, we get to play that, draw a card, unfortunately not anything that's relevant. But this Prismatic Strands means we have a very good chance of being able to hold on to the Monarchy at this point. Here they're trying to remove our creature, and once again I'm going to cast the Prismatic Strands before our creature dies, just in case we need to cast it a second time. And we're going to go pro black, so they're not able to steal the Monarchy. And we're going to kill the, the Archaeomancer just to prevent any flickering type things. We ended up drawing a Chainer's Edict to remove their last creature, so now they have no creatures, we have the Monarchy, and things are looking pretty good from that standpoint. They do have another Archaeomancer, and they're going to get back the Doomblade. So we do know they're going to be able to kill our creature at some point. And they do cast Reap in the Grave, so they're going to be able to get a bit of their value back. Another Archaeomancer and a Crypt Rat, or Chittering Rats. Uh, this does mean, though, that we can get our Pestilence online, or we can cast the Chainer's Edict. I think I didn't choose the best option, and I went with the Pestilence. Uh, I think getting the Chainer's Edict down there is more important, just to prevent our creature from being attacked. Or us from being attacked. But I'm going to go ahead and use the Pestilence here to remove their creature if I need to. Although this does open us up to um, basically losing the Pestilence, and that's when I realized, oh, I should probably keep the Pestilence around no matter what. And basically try and prevent them from playing creatures. When they attack, they do take the Monarchy, but now at the end of the turn, I can remove both of their creatures. So while this may not be the optimal line, I do feel like it is probably the best line I could have chosen since I went suboptimal previously. The best line was definitely to flashback the Chainer's Edict and hold the Pestilence in hand. So here, 
we're just going to try and kill them with Pestilence, it ends up being just good enough. So thankfully our opponent was able to play around all of the lines. Getting the Pestilence down since they were at low life total is a good route to victory, and it does end up working. I still do think that the best line, though, is probably the Chainer's Edict flashback just to prevent anything. Although that does open them up to being able to have a counter spell. So perhaps I did end up choosing the best line with uh, going to Pestilence, preventing them from playing creatures, activating it at the end of turn to get in some damage, and that means I get to untap with it with all of my black mana to burn them again. So, debatably which uh, option was the best, this one ends up working out for us. So, we will jump on over to game two. And take a quick look at the sideboard. Since they have a lot of edict effects, the guardians of the guild pack lose a lot of their value since they're still able to be removed. And I'd rather not have a four drop that doesn't do as much as I would hope. So I take those out. Um, I could take out the Doom Blades, but since it does kill the Archaeomancers, I don't mind leaving two of those in. I do... Let's see, what else are we bring? We've been the four Duresses, since we want to be able to fight their counter magic. And since I'm taking out the Guardian, I also want to take out the Gift, since that is the main combo. If we put the Gift on any other creature, it's just going to get removed and we get two for one, so no good there. We are bringing in our third Palace Sentinels, since this is a control matchup, we do want to have that effect to draw additional cards, and we also bring in the Raven's Crime. This is a way for us to play the long game and make them discard a lot of cards over time. Uh, there is always the option of bringing in some number of Choking Sands just to reduce the amount of mana they have over the course of the game, but I didn't feel like uh, it was the best option in this matchup. I do bring in the Relic of Progenitus. We want to be able to reduce their graveyard. They are definitely playing the Flicker effect, so we want to be able to fight that. And that's, uh, yeah. Also bring out the Prismatic Strands. I didn't see any Evercar Justice. Uh, that's not something you'd normally see out of the Flicker deck. So we're going to bring those out. They're basically dead cards. Uh, they just kind of like help you fight for the Monarchy, but we can do that better by just discarding things out of their hand and fighting their graveyard, essentially. So, yeah, let's jump into the game. Our opening hand is barely keepable. We do have our Raven's Crime, which we're happy to see. The rest uh, pick apart some things early. Thankfully, we do have the Ash Barons. You can bounce it back with the Bounce Land and then immediately cycle it for any land that we need. Uh, the lone missionaries aren't that great in this matchup, but we're just happy to get some early pressure just to make sure they're playing stuff. Palace Sentinels was excellent off the top. That is the card we want to see, and we want to try and get that online and draw additional cards off of it. Since we do a Swamp, I'm just going to cash in a Raven's Crime here with the intention of duressing the following turn. I also didn't want to discard by playing the Bounce Land the previous turn, so this way I get to play some cards without needing to discard. And I now bounce the Ash Barons and cycle for a Plains. I want for the Plains since we have multiple White Reaches we play this turn. Shitting Rats, while a little annoying, means we can get out of Palace Sentinels. I wasn't going to play it, but since we have two, I don't have to worry about our creature being removed and not being able to get the uh, Monarchy back right away. Here we're just going to get out a Core Skyfisher to get in the way of the Mole Drifter, and we're just basically hoping to fade some any like removal effects. Chances are they just have minus removal effects, and that doesn't kill our creatures outright. They play another Mole Drifter, we play another Skyfisher, so right now they're drawing multiple cards with Mole Drifters, and we're drawing multiple cards with our Monarchy. We're just going to go ahead and block everything. There is the chance that they have something to kill our creatures, and it turns out that they do have the Evercurse Justice and are able to wipe the board. This is completely fine for us, since if they have no creatures, they can't steal the Monarchy, and we're just going to continue drawing two cards a turn. Getting the Relic Progenitors is really nice, we get to start picking apart their graveyard. And we're just going to play some additional creatures. They go to Archaeomancer to get the Chainer's Edict, and even though we do lose the Raven's Crime, I feel like it's best for us to keep a creature on the board at this point and to stop any value they're getting out of their Archaeomancer, so go ahead and crack the Relic. And since I'm expecting their hand to be fairly removal light, other than the uh, Evercar's Justice, that's why I did that. They Doom Blade, we block, we still have Monarchy, that turns out they do have another Archaeomancer to get the Doom Blade back. So we got to slog through quite a few removal spells. When I duress, uh, we're able to see quite a bit of their hand, and basically 
They we took the ghostly flicker. That was going to be the most value of their hand. We know we can try and play around the rest of it. So they have some removal spells here. Uh, they can't doomblade our creature, but I also don't want them to have the monarchy. So I'm just going to go ahead and trade our crypt rats for their archaeomancer. Uh, this bajuka bog should be pretty helpful for us because we want to get rid of their archaeomancers and their other things. But it turns out they decide to cash in their reaping the grave that we knew about here, which is very good. Otherwise, it would. We would have basically won on the spot. We're going to get rid of the Reaping the Grave so they can't just keep comboing off with their Archaeomancers. And here they are able to get back the Monarchy, but we're not too concerned. We do have another Palace Sentinels and we do have Pestilences. This Pestilence will be able to remove all of their creatures. Here uh, there's a couple different options. Uh, basically, I could Pestilence for two, kill both of their guys, but then there is a chance that they have another removal spell, or they might use their Evercar's Justice to kill our other guy. That would remove the Pestilence. We do have another one in hand, so that might have been a reasonable play. The other option is to block and Doom Blade, and then once again they're in the position of doing those other options. So I feel like probably the best option would have been to use the Pestilence to kill both their creatures. I think I went with the, the Doom Blade line, just kind of seeing what they have. Uh, so the main okay, so the main reason why I went with the Doomblade plan instead of the Pestilence, if they have a Ghostly Flicker in their hand, and I use Pestilence, my guy still has two damage on it, and they may be able to remove my guy while still having both of theirs. If they had some kind of minus effect, like the Evercar's Just Evercar's Justice. Uh, whereas if I block and then Doomblade and they Ghostly Flicker, my Palace Sentinels has no damage on it and does not die to some of those effects. So. Probably since I know most of the contents of their hand at this point, it would have been better to go with the Pestilence, so in hindsight, I probably could have saved one additional card in my hand. Stormbound Geist is fine. We're just going to Pestilence now, and then we can always Pestilence again for three on their turn to remove it. Ends up they have a Doomblade to get rid of our creature, and here is where I kind of wish... Yeah, so you probably also noticed I made a suboptimal play there. I just went with the, oh, I'm going to kill on their turn. I, w I played the Lone Mission, I'm like, wait a minute. He just spent a removal spell on my guy. Why am I not killing his guy and then playing creatures afterwards? So, realizing I did make the mistake, I ended up just uh, killing my Lone Missionary anyways for no value. Bit of a misplay, uh, sub like suboptimal sequencing, just I hadn't switched gears quick enough to realize that I had an alternative play. I made the switch as soon as I realized, and now I'm just drawing additional cards and picking apart his hand. I was able to get the Evercar's Justice there, and now we know that the one card in their hand is a uh, Counterspell, so we just have to play around that. Uh, I did end up cycling in Ash Barrens. I forgot to count on my lands, mainly because there's a Plains in my graveyard, which I hadn't accounted for. So, end up not being able to find anything in the Ash Barrens. I'd recommend keeping better count. We only have six basics. Could have played it for one additional land. And yeah, we're sitting on a ton of Pestilence, so basically we don't mind cashing it in to prevent them from getting the Monarchy. Even if we do lose it, it's no big deal. We're going to be able to kill two of his creatures. We're also going to be looking at some point over the game using these Pestilences, just kind of getting the last 12 damage. So we're able to kill both their creatures, and when the trigger goes on stack to sacrifice it, we're just going to chip in the last few damage. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9. Basically, we're playing additional black sources, and next turn, if we're able to resolve a Pestilence, we do win the game. We do know they have a counter spell, so we're not going to play the Swamp right away. We're going to try and play the Pestilence to see if he lets it resolve. He does counter spell, that's fine. We're not going to play out the second one right away because we do want to play it and win the same turn. So we're just going to play a Thraven Inspector, we're going to draw some additional cards, get down the Ape Rip Watcher, and we're just going to try and get in some damage the old fashioned way. Turing Rats is fine, just means kind of like gets rid of one of our draws, but we're still drawing two cards a turn, so no big deal. We're going to go ahead and cast the Pestilence here, play the additional land, and might as well swing in for two damage before activating the Pestilence. We do have to play around the fact that they might have a Flicker effect. Possibly in response to the Radiant tr Trigger we could have gone for, but if they had a Flicker effect that would have been able to keep them alive, probably. Uh, instead of just kind of going for it at the end of their turn, I just 
ping them for one. I don't feel like there's any need to rush it. If their last card is a ghostly flicker, we're going to be fine just going for it at the end of their turn this time. So while this may be a bit of a slow play, I felt like this is our, after making misplays earlier on, this is the most surefire way of winning. Turns out our opponent did have a ghostly flicker to gain some additional life, but we're just going to continue to peg away at their life total, and we do win this one. This means that we do make it into top 8, so you are welcome to join me for the quarterfinals. I will see you there.